impressed with the Chiefs or disappointed with the Ravens? I'm more impressed with the Chiefs. And uh, I get that the Baltimore Ravens were supposed to be a team that would challenge the Chiefs this year. But when you look at how the Chiefs won the Super Bowl last year, I don't think that they were the best team in the NFL. They were the team that was on point when they needed to be the most. They were the team that found a way to win late in the season. But that team improved. The Kansas City Chiefs went back home after winning the Super Bowl after the Super Bowl parade, and they took stock in who they were. They took stock in the fact that we can't create explosive play. So what do we do? We go out and get Hollywood Brown in free agency and we draft Xavier Worthy in the first round. They were specific about drafting Xavier Worthy. If you watch the film, if you look at the stats, he may not have been the guy that should have went in that place, but he was the guy that was exactly what they wanted. What do you do? You get him a touch on the reverse early. He's not touched, untouched going into the end zone. He frees up late in the game. Rasheed Rice working the football over the middle. A defense, it's Steve Spagnola that still makes play that still pressures the quarterback and a quarterback in Patrick Mahomes that's just getting better that understands the game more than he ever has understood the game but still the athleticism the improvisation the way to make plays when nothing's there is still what he does on top of now having better skilled mm -hmm. players around him the continuity and the consistency of still having Matt Nagy of having Steve Spagnola Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes at the helm has this team time or has this team on a different tier than they were last year? And I think they've already separated themselves from the pack. Stephen Once a. again, y'all are missing the point. And Ryan Clark, I respectfully disagree with you to some degree. Because see, as I say all the time, I'm a brilliant brother because I know I'm not. I simply steal knowledge from those who have it. And that's I learned. And as I listen to Dan Orlovsky and as I listen to Mina Kimes and as I listen to RC and Swagoo and everybody else break down football the way that you do, there are elements that you throw into the equation that you choose to forget on a particular day. Certainly looking at Xavier Worthy and looking what he brings to the table, Rice, and, and, and you're looking at the weapons that they have available to Kansas City. They look a little better than they did last year. Fair enough. That's why I'm disappointed with the Baltimore Ravens because you're the one that lost in the AFC Championship game. You're the one that knew you was going to open this season in Kansas City. You the know, you're the one that knew you was going up against that monster that is Patrick Mahomes. And as sensational as the numbers were and what Lamar Jackson looked like at certain intervals, you threw for, I mean, listen, over nearly 400 yards total offense with this brother running for 122 yards on the ground. He was absolutely spectacular for the most part. But those two missed throws. Come on, man. This is a game of it's the six inches in front of your face. Al Pacino told us in any given Sunday, damn it. It comes down to that. We know how great you are. We know how great Lamar Jackson is. We knew that Baltimore was going to answer the call, even with a new defensive coordinator, who, by the way, did a hell of a job. That guy or did a hell of a job last night because you saw this offense to some degree getting, getting neutralized to some degree. They had big moments that they missed, too. There was a couple of drop passes for Patrick Mahomes that could have ended up being something big, but it didn't happen. But for for the most part, Baltimore's defense showed up. You look at Kansas City, and I'm sorry, you look at Baltimore, and what are you saying to yourself? Lamar Jackson, you can't miss that throw. You can't yeah. miss that throw to Zay Flowers in that end zone. You can, and by the way, Lively was open. You could have hit him, and he almost got hurt. I was shocked that he was in to catch that last pass where his toe was out like Kevin Durant against Milwaukee a few years ago in the playoffs. I was shocked that, that he was even in for that play. But in the end, football is about moments. Y'all have taught me that. Y'all have taught me that over and over and over again. We don't get to ignore that now because guess what? Lamar Jackson played a hell of a game and they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the reigning defending two-time Super Bowl champions. You've got to take advantage of those moments. He did not do that, and that's why I sit here disappointed in the Baltimore Ravens. I 100% agree with Stephen A. here. How can you say, RC, on one hand, I'm impressed with the Chiefs who won a Super Bowl last year, and then we all knew, at least on paper, that they got better that's not necessarily impressive. It was more disappointing that you're looking at a Ravens team that clearly didn't play anyone in the preseason, that looked sloppy as hell, seven penalties for 64 yards, and that doesn't even begin to tell how much positive yardage they left out there. I'm thinking about that roughing the passer penalty towards the end of the game that was pivotal on that game-winning ultimately drive for the Chiefs. They had three new offensive linemen. They had a brand-new defensive coordinator, and the defense, as Stephen A., held up largely but had some really key mistakes down the stretch, some Horrible penalties, again, going back to that, that negated some big plays. There was so much confusion. They had to blow time. It was bad. And they still came within an inch 
of tying this game and potentially winning this game. That is the most disappointing part, is that the Ravens didn't even come close to playing their best game, and they still had an opportunity in the end. What I'm impressed by with the Chiefs, I'm impressed by their ability to incorporate their new targets right away. A couple of years ago, this is three straight seasons now, that they've been able to get in their rookie debut their offensive weapon to hit pay dirt. A couple of years ago, it was Pacheco. Last year, it was Rice. This year, we saw it was Xavier Worthy. But in terms of disappointment, it's the Ravens. Because while Dan Orlovsky seems to think, and I watched him on Get Up earlier, that well, this, sh this should have been a blowout. This should have been a blowout. Lamar Jackson was abysmal in the first half in the red zone. A couple of off-target throws there, including the one that I'm thinking about, right, to Justice Hill, yeah. where hey, he yeah. that ended up getting sure. batted down. And sure. then he missed those, those plays in the end. They Lamar had so many opportunities. Lamar was one of eight in the red zone last night. One Thank of eight. You. That's 13%. Yes. That's not good. Yeah. Not good. And it still ahead, came Dan. down to a okay. toe. One of, all the, all the mean, little footed men in America were like, yeah. the size still so, matter. So, so Chanel made a great play Chanel's as a spy a yes. on, on Justice Hill going across the middle. But Dan, you go ahead. Uh, there's one team I, I, disappointed in Baltimore. There was one team in last night's game that could have changed our minds. And that was Baltimore. Can you actually beat them? Can you actually play to a style to, to finally prove that you can beat them in a big game? I know they did it once, like, a couple years ago, whatnot. Can you get it done? They didn't. Here's the thing. Number one, I don't think the game was as close as the score. Two dropped touchdowns that are walking touchdowns, certainly one of them, that make the game different. The second thing is they get a great fourth down stop at basically the midfield line by um, McDuffie, and then the very next play – Patrick throws an uncharacteristic interception. That's going to be at least three points. So I don't think this game was as close as the score. Number two, I watch a team that doesn't know who they are offensively. And that's disappointing. You got Derrick Henry. We talked all offseason about the addition and what that was going to mean. And I'm watching you going, oh, you don't know what to do with them. If this was a situation comparable to last year in Kansas City where you had catch dropping 44 passes or they were dropping passes like they were about to drop 44 passes in the season, you'd have a valid point. Lively was open. You missed him. Jay Fly I was so wide open. There wasn't anybody within seven yards of the man. Uh, live, uh, like that, I'm sorry. And, you know, and Jay, and, you know, Jay Flowers is in the end zone, and you threw it five yards beyond, beyond, behind him for crying out loud. And, and if we want to really get down to it, I see you know this obviously better than me because you're one of the people that teach me football. In the end, what it comes down to is this, bro. Lamar Jackson ain't as refined as a passer as we need him to be when you're going up against Patrick Mahomes, who he is now one and five against. One and five. Think about yeah, that. He's not as a fun of a pass. There with that so, ask the, so ask the question about Lamar Jackson then. Are we disappointed okay. that Lamar Jackson, are we more disappointed in the fact that Lamar Jackson didn't make the last two throws than we are impressed with who Patrick Mahomes is? Then I would say yes. But that wasn't the question. Okay. The question was about these teams. The Ravens. The question was about the fact that the, the Kansas City Chiefs are the two-time defending champs. And I told y'all last year, if y'all going to beat them, beat them last year because they're better now. That's fair. And we're talking about Lamar Jackson missing those passes. Isaiah Pacheco dropped one and hit him in the face. Well, what, yeah. well, what does it say to you? Schuster had the but, football but in his it, hand. But what does it say zone. to you? But what does it Kelsey say to you? that the ball. It's 27-20. He catches the ball and keeps his toe in and doesn't resemble Kevin Durant. We got it. Listen, I won't, I won't say a tie game because it would have been 27-26. And John Harbaugh was going for the two. He was going for the win. He was signaling going for the win. But what I'm saying is Kansas City is clearly better. And Baltimore was still right there. If, if Lamar the Jackson does what crazy. he's supposed to. Because he I'm had sorry. 400, sorry. Stephen A. I apologize. I couldn't hear you. You know what I'm saying? Because the quarterback went crazy. Like, the Baltimore Ravens, as they are assembled right now with the new defensive coordinator, we're trying to figure out how to use Derrick Henry. They're not a good football team. The only reason there. Lamar Jackson is where he is at the end of that game is because he lost his mind. But I think, okay. that's the, I think that's the frustrating part. Like, I think that we saw the full Lamar experience yesterday, and that's some of the issue, especially when you look at that final drive. He's exciting. He is entertaining. He is awe-inspiring. And then he is incredibly frustrating. And I think that's the problem at this point with Lamar is that, yes, ultimately, they're not even in that game if out, without his antics. 
but ultimately they didn't win the game because he couldn't make right. a series of throws, period. And, he, you know, we keep saying, well, you know, Zay Flowers was wide open. According to Lamar, he wasn't even targeting him. He yeah, was he going from Rashad Bateman. Bateman. Yeah. He was trying to go to Bateman. And then before that even with Likely in the corner, like you've got to be able to make that. Hold and on. The, the issue is, I will say this, though, Stephen A., I don't but, agree with you in that he can't make all the big throws. There seems to be something going on I'm specifically with Kansas City because against every other team last year, 68% in the red mm-hmm. zone is what he threw, right. his completion percentage. Three nuggets just, here. When he Three plays nuggets. this team, it just it, it, it's not clicking. Three nuggets here. Number one, because I know Molly's ready to move on to the next subject, which is a l- relatable to this subject, but three, three, three things. Number one, I never said he can't. I said he did it, and he doesn't appear to be as, re- to, as refined as he needs to be to go up against that monster that is Patrick Mahomes. There's a difference. Number two, really, it's not three things. It's really, really number two. I know we got to get to Dan. I'm looking at Ryan Clark. Nobody can compete with Molly and L. Duncan. But I have to admit, Ron Clark, I'm looking at this brown suit right here. It looks pretty damn good on me, my brother. I just want to say I'm just dis- I'm distracting myself right now. I'm distracting myself right now how I'm looking in Let this brown suit it. right now, RC. I mean, I know you rocking the yellow, but I just I was like, I was like, damn, I- I'm looking kind of good this morning. I just want to throw Steve, that out there. Stephen A, I, I am I am very proud of your weight loss and <laughs> you leaning out. Uh, you've done a great job of adjusting the fit of your suit as well. But if we're going to get excited because you got a you brown suit, brown suit <laughs> you got then our expectations are very, very yeah. low. 